Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to do the Surface Shootout. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a range of Surface uh, tablets and Surface laptop and compare some of the features and see which model is likely to be best for you. So chronologically, let's go with the Surface Pro 3 first. Then we have the Surface Book, and then we have the Surface Laptop, which has just been released in the third quarter of 2017. So all three of these running Intel hardware, all of them running dual core with four threads. Um, the differences being the Surface Book is currently running an i5, which is the 6300U. I have the Surface Pro 3, which is running an i7 uh, 4690U, I believe. And the new Surface Laptop, which is running the latest KB Lake i5 7300U. All three processors have a TDP of 15 watts, so uh, equally all three of them are very good at conserving power and energy. And battery-wise, are likely to last you in excess of 8 to 12 hours. All three of them have relatively good cooling, with the Surface Laptop being the best one so far that I've found, which is virtually silent. Unlike the Surface Pro 3, which is currently building up ahead of steam as we speak, and you can probably hear that now. Now of all three models, the Surface Pro 3 is the one that I've spent the most time with, as you can tell by the state of the keyboard, which is starting to show signs of wear and tear which is where one of the uh, problems with this range comes into effect. The Surface Laptop, as lovely as it is with its Alcantara leather keyboard, after a few months of use, I envisage this looking similar to this one, with greasy marks on the keys uh, where it's been used as a consumption device. With the Surface Pro 3, and slightly so with the Surface Book, you can replace the keyboards by just tearing the keyboard off, buying a new keyboard. With the Surface Laptop, that isn't possible. So clearly Microsoft, um, with their designs, have taken a great keyboard, improved it slightly, and then it's come full circle where the keyboard is excellent, but longevity possibly is suffering. So that's one element of design which you could take into uh, consideration when you're considering one of these particular Surface models. Another option to look at is cooling. Now, what do you need from your Surface Book or your laptop? Do you need it to be quiet? Do you need it to be virtually silent? Or are you using it to create media or using it for consumption? Or are you going to be using it in the middle of the night somewhere where you want it to be quiet? If you're looking for a quiet version, then again, the Surface Pro 3 whether it being because of its uh, immaturity as far as the Microsoft production has, has gone, this has been problematic from day one. It's been very noisy. The fan ramps up to incredible speeds. And even now, where it's not actually doing anything at all apart from showing a screen, is very, very warm on the back of the unit, uh, almost to the point where I'd say it's faulty, but um, it still works, so. It maybe isn't faulty, just a design feature. Now, apart from that, the other two, the Surface Book, which occasionally will ramp the fans up in certain situations, such as uh, rendering within Adobe Premiere or playing some games, it, the fan will definitely ramp up and be noticeable. But I suppose that's to be expected in, in that kind of environment. Uh, the Surface Laptop still even though doing the same things, rendering in Adobe or playing games, I haven't yet noticed the fan actually kick in once. I'm assuming there is a fan in there somewhere. Uh, maybe you could tell me in the comments below if there is or not. But as far as I can tell, it is uh, completely silent. Now, some of the silence helps with all three of these models because they're all based on the same SSD technology. Um, all the models taking either 64, 128, 256, or if you can afford it, 512 gigabyte SSDs, of course, which are going to be silent. So the only real mo moving parts in any of these models are going to be the, the fans inside them. So if noise is going to be a potential factor for you uh, for making your choice for one of these, the Surface Pro 3, definitely the noisiest of the bunch and the most problematic of the bunch. These two, no problems at all. 
So we've talked about CPUs and we've talked about keyboards and we've talked about fans. Let's talk about the screens now. Now screen-wise, all, uh, all three models sporting touch screens, all, cons all using a 10-point multi-touch, um, all three being of a similar resolution, all sporting the uh, 3x2 or 2x3 resolution, however you want to look at it. Now all three screens, um, if I had to put all three of them together like this, I'd be hard pressed to find any difference in uh, colour contrast or colour accuracy between them. They all seem to be, in my opinion, quite good. Um, again, the only one I would say that sticks out slightly as being slightly off colour is the Surface Pro 3. Now looking at the graphic on all three, the blues definitely look a truer colour blue on those two rather than the Surface Pro. Now, whether that's because of its uh, age and it's been used a lot longer, but it definitely, to me, appears to be a, a slightly more washed out look to it. So again, if the colour accuracy is going to be important to you for media creation, etc., then I would say, if I had to judge between the two, I would say the Surface Book takes the upper edge there um, with its, I think, slightly larger screen. It looks to be about 13 and a half inches. But to me, I don't know, it seems that that one, it, fit, it seems bigger. So that's the screens covered. Now, the next thing is portability or usability. Now, for me, all three of them are very well built. Well, apart from the uh, slight technical issue with the fans on the Surface Pro 3. But all three of them very robust with uh, these two with their magnesium shells and this one with its aluminium shell. Very, very well made. And going back to well made, the fan on this thing is going absolutely crazy and it's getting to melting point. So I think this is probably a good time for me to shut this one down. Okay, so if you just fast forward and you've got to this part of the video and you're wondering why the, the Surface Pro 3 is turned off, it's because it's uh, got really hot and its fan was going crazy and it's probably picking up on the audio. So I didn't want to distract from your viewing pleasure, so I've turned it off. So going back to what I was saying about uh, portability or usability, now the Surface Pro 3, um, despite its faults, has been fantastic for a consumption device. Uh, by taking the unit off of the keyboard and using it on its kickstand, it, it has been very good for watching movies, uh, basically just media consumption, it's been fantastic for. Uh, and also I I've, I've have actually used it for creating documents and for using even rendering and uh, creating videos in Adobe Premiere. So just because it's aimed as, as a consumption device doesn't mean it can be made as a creation device as well. Although I would say if you are looking to use one of these as a permanent base for your creations rather than a desktop PC, I would certainly recommend either trying the laptop or the Surface Book purely because the A, the larger screen and B, the keyboards. The keyboard on the Surface Pro 3, although very good, isn't very nice for long-term typing and the whole thing is a little bit on the sort of flimsy side. Whereas with the Surface Book, uh, very much in the same vein as the uh, iBook or the Apple, whatever they call it, Pro these days. Um, the keys are very nice. The keyboard you can type on for a long time. It doesn't get tiring. The touchpad is a fantastic size. Uh, both of those are actually very similar size. For media creation, I would say either one of these two devices would be far superior than the uh, Surface Pro 3 or even Surface Pro 4. So now the ball's in your court. Do you want a uh, ultra portable detachable screen or do you want the simplicity of a Microsoft laptop? Or do you want to go old school and just have a convertible tablet? Choice is up to you. I'm going to put the links to the uh, prices and descriptions from the Microsoft website for all of these models and the Surface Pro 4 as well. Uh, if you've got any questions on these models, you can put them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. So I've, I've had a, quite a lot of experience of uh, all three of these models and the Surface Pro 4. So uh, if there's any questions that you've got which are sort of stopping your buying decision, then let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer them for you as honestly as I can. Anyway, I've witted on long enough. These are the, my three top models. Uh, let's hear about your top three models in the comments. I've been Mike, this is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and this has been the Microsoft Surface Shootout. Thanks for watching.